In this video, we're going to learn a little bit about true column proofs and the given statements that are provided to us with each proof. And we're going to take a look at this cheat sheet. This cheat sheet will provide guidance on how to elaborate upon common keywords found in the given statement of a proof. And for each of the examples, we're going to fill in the blanks for each sample proof. So there are four key terms that we're going to go over in this video. So the first one will be perpendicular then parallel, then midpoint, and then bisect. All right, let's start with perpendicular. So this problem tells us the given statement that BD is perpendicular to AC. So when we read the given statements of a proof, we want to think about, well, what does that tell us? So I know perpendicular lines form right angles, and I'm going to go in my picture and mark off where those right angles are. So I know that angle BDA and BDC are right angles, and I know that because we know perpendicular lines form right angles. In a proof, we're going to take that same information and just format it. So we start off by writing the givens. BD is perpendicular to AC. In the reason column, we explain how we know that. Well, that was simply given to us. Then we're going to identify what those right angles are, just like we did in the picture. So they are angle BDA and angle BDC. How do we know that? Well, perpendicular lines form right angles. The goal in proofs is going to be finding that corresponding parts, meaning angles or segments, are congruent to one another. So I know in this problem that angle BDA is congruent to angle BDC because all right angles are congruent to one another. So when we are working with proofs in the future and we see the word perpendicular, we're going to come back to this section and reference it. Basically, everything that is typed out here is things that we're going to be repeating pretty close to word for word, such as perpendicular lines form right angles. But anything that we fill the blank in with, we have to really look at each new diagram in order to determine the angle names. All right, let's take a look at the second one. This term is parallel. We're just going to look at the picture first. And we're given that BC is parallel to DA. What I like to do in the parallel line examples is always highlight the parallel lines. And then I take a look to see if I could find a Z shape. And it could be a backward Z, sideways Z. And if I connect B to D, I have this backward Z shape. The angles that are inside like the corners of that Z shape are alternate interior angles. You might remember that alternate interior angles are formed by a transversal and parallel lines and that they're congruent to one another. This picture I drew off to the side is how we're used to seeing it, but we really do have that here in this example as well. If you look at my new picture here, here's that Z shape. Okay. So based on that, remember, we're going to formalize all of this information in a proof format. So BC is parallel to DA. That's given to us. Then we know that angle ADB and angle CBD are alternate interior angles because parallel lines cut by a transversal form alternate interior angles. And we know those angles are congruent because alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, our third example is midpoint. Let's look at our diagram. We are given that C is the midpoint of AD. So midpoints basically split a line segment into two congruent parts. So C is taking AD and splitting it into two congruent parts. And those two congruent parts look like AC and DC. So I'm going to go over here and fill that in. And there's our reasoning that we talked about. We were given that C is the midpoint of AD, and we know AC and DC are congruent because of our definition of midpoint. All right, for our last example, we have the word bisect. AE bisects BD. Always look at whatever comes after the word bisect. That's what's being cut in half or divided into two congruent parts. So if I look at BD, the two congruent parts are BC and DC. I'm looking at the two halves that basically compose BD. So BC and DC. 
here's our formalization in the proof format. Um, we have one little thing to just clarify here though. So we know AE bisects BD, that was given. And we know BC is congruent to DC because a bisector splits a segment slash angle into two congruent parts. Whenever you see bisector in a proof and you're gonna reference this cheat sheet, we're going to pick the word that best fits and it's gonna change. In this example, it's going to be a segment bisector because BD, which was what was bisected, is a segment. You're going to see in a couple of examples that we're going to have one that's actually an angle bisector instead. So for our sample questions in this video, um, it says for each question, set up a two column proof, write the givens and elaborate upon them. So I have already gone in and I have set up the two columns for each proof and I've written the givens for each proof. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how do we use that cheat sheet to fill out more of the proof. So in number one, I know that AB is parallel to CD. That tells me that I have alternate interior angles and I can look for this Z shape using the parallel segments in order to identify them. So here are my two alternate interior angles. So here's how we use the cheat sheet. Since this keyword or symbol in this case is parallel, I'm gonna look back to the parallel section of the previous page and I find it here. Basically everything in lines two and three is what we get to copy over. Okay. And then we're gonna just kind of fill in the blanks based on this picture. The picture is gonna change, so what goes in the blanks is going to change. All right, so if I take a look at this here, it says um, something and something are alternate interior angles. So I'm gonna say angle ABD and angle CDB are alternate interior angles. And again, you can refer back to that cheat sheet to help you. And my reason is parallel lines. Cut by a transversal. Form alternate interior angles. Remember that your reason always is justifying the statement that you just wrote. And in the next line, I'm gonna say that they're congruent. I'm using the same two angle names. And I know they're congruent because alternate interior angles are congruent. So eventually our proofs will have an actual proof statement and end goal of what we're looking for. For now, we're just talking about how do we work with whatever is in the givens and how do we elaborate upon them? All right, let's try another one. In number two, it says L is the midpoint of JN. So if I look at JN, the two pieces are JL and NL that become congruent. And I would look back at my cheat sheet on the previous page, find the midpoint section now and I'm gonna use this piece here to guide me. Since I've already filled in the givens, I don't need to do that again. So I'm gonna say the two pieces are congruent because the midpoint splits a segment into two congruent parts. So again, our two pieces in this picture, JL is congruent to segment NL because the midpoint splits a segment into two congruent parts. All right, number three, DB bisects angle ABC. 